Hello everyone, and welcome back to another sketchbook flip through. This is one of my moleskin watercolor sketchbooks, and it is from January 2015 to March 2016. So this is quite a while ago. This is second year of my degree, and I'll just show you what I was working on at the time. I was really just starting to figure out how I liked to paint in this year and um, trying out different mediums, mostly watercolor and gouache. Here's a sketch that I did at the Royal Tyrell Museum. So I've been drawing at the Royal Tyrell for at least two or three years now. Um, I go back multiple times a year and I love to draw there. These are just some magazine clippings. Um, it's been so long now that I don't really remember what was underneath here. I'm guessing it was some figure paintings maybe, um, but I think sometimes it's okay and permissible to put in some clippings that inspire you um, over top of things that just uh, didn't go well. You know, your sketchbook is for you mostly, so if there are things that you'd rather be looking at, feel free to stick them in there. It can be as much a scrapbook as it is a place to draw and learn. These are some life drawings from the zoo and these are quite old um, and I can definitely draw better figures than this from memory now so that's good. It proves that I've been learning something. Part of this sketchbook was done for one of my introductory environments classes. So we did a lot of days where they would just send us out of the college to paint. Um, so here are some examples from that. These are done in gouache. I think this one turned out pretty well because I made sure to keep a limited color palette that was natural enough. So this is just a red green complementary color scheme and I think that's why it, it, it turned out so well. It also has a foreground element that you're looking past so it makes you feel a little bit more like you're in the composition rather than separate from it. One of the assignments for that um, class was to paint the same thing at different times of the day. Something like you had to do it at least six times or something like that. Um, so I painted my greenhouse of the place that I was renting during college. Um, I had this really nice corrugated um, green roof on there. So, and I could also paint it from my kitchen window. So if it got too cold, because um, I live in Canada, I went to school in Canada and um, fall gets very cold very fast. Um, that way I, I knew I would be able to paint inside if it started to snow early in the season or anything like that. This one I did at night. Um, we get a lot of light pollution in our city and it turns the sky this sort of like pinky red color in the winter. Um, so I tried to capture that. Uh, I think the camera's picking it up a little lighter than it actually is. It's quite a dark painting. Here's one that was a sunset. This is a little bit um, more dramatic <laughs> than it would have been in, in real life, but it's it's difficult to get all those dark tones to also convey the correct colors. Um, this was good practice. Here's one that's a little more minimal. A couple uh, pink wash, an orange wash, and then just details in a dark blue. Here's another more minimal one. This was taken at, or painted rather, at dusk, and there was a, a light from someone's garage over here shining this orange on there. This one here is looking through that plastic roofing of the greenhouse at sort of a soft sunset. I think this one turned out the best. Um, and there's one on the opposite side here that was a little bit more of a, an experiment in abstraction. Obviously there were other buildings and stuff aside um, my greenhouse, but 
I thought it would be cute just to paint it by itself. So I did. I think the rest of this book is mainly just color roughs and um, composition layouts. So I'll show you these here. These are also for that environment class. And this one actually might be familiar to some of you if you've checked out my portfolio website. I still use part of this painting as part of my layout and headers on my portfolio website at the present moment. I'm going to be changing it soon, but for now this piece features quite prominently in its final form, which has a lot of digital overpainting, um, which is a way that I quite like to work. I would paint something small and in gouache to get um, the gouache textures and then paint over it to get the details in Photoshop. This one is another one that I did a lot of heavy paint overs in Photoshop and I still quite like the image and you can see it on my website as well. This is one that I painted in watercolor um, and <clears throat> I painted it really fast, so it doesn't have the correct colors at all. It was more an experiment and just to see how quickly I could do something like that. Some more stuff for that environments class. And even more. For this one here, I painted the background by itself, and then this part is cut out and taped over top. The tape's been on here for two years, so I'm not going to try to take it off, but you can see that it's two separate layers, which is kind of a fun way to work in a sketchbook. This one's another example of that, where the fence is a separate piece of paper. And here's one final painting of that greenhouse. This side here is just a color rough for a project that changed a lot didn't end up looking like this and this is a painting of a building in my city that I really like it's um, old it's probably totally full of asbestos and nobody uses it anymore um, but because it's concrete it's difficult to knock down so it's still standing but it's all cordoned off um, but it's very brutalist and I really enjoy brutalist architecture some more color roughs here A little painting I did at a conservatory, just of a plant there. Some more thumbnailing and color roughs. Here's a fun page. Um, I did a whole bunch of little color, color swatches. Um, I love to do paintings that are just seeing what colors look nice together and then um, using that to then decide what to make the colors of a final piece. And here is just a sample of doing a painting with a, a bright red underpainting. Um, this was one of the first times I had actually done that, so um, the success is sort of hit or miss, but you can see here that the the tree is outlined in a, in a brighter orange underpainting, which gives it more um, luminous quality than it would be if you didn't have that underpainting. And then to finish it off, I just did some a type painted in acrylic gouache, um, which I really like for getting nice flat colors. And I just thought that was a nice way to end off this sketchbook. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. I just wanted to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Um, there's over 1,000 of you now, which happened so quickly. I'm so grateful and I look forward to sharing more videos with you soon. I'm also really close to a thousand followers on Instagram, so I'll leave a link to my Instagram account below and you can follow me if you feel like it. I'm going to be having a little giveaway, something very simple, once I hit 1,000 followers slash subscribers on both YouTube and Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see more information about that fairly soon. Bye!